This box has in it the new Uniformation GK3 Pro and I'm going to make a video about this because they sent it to me in order for me to make a video about it. Uh, also, my name is your dad and uh, welcome to Ground Affected. I have a very different approach to making these a printer review kind of videos. To me, this is not a review and more kind of just watching your buddy open up a printer that you wish you could have bought and when you have enough money or if you even care about the printer, then you might consider buying it later. So while, rather than thinking about the video in terms of a review, think about it like that, maybe that might help your brain. Basically, let me just quickly shoot some of the information. The printer is a 385 nanometer light. That is not the 405 that you used to in standard printers also the build size 118 millimeters by 240 millimeters by 211 millimeters there is another difference with this machine it has a automatic feeding uh, system you can put in a bottle at the back and this gives you more resin it also has a Fresnel lens to boost that UV light uh, and make sure it's super focused it has ball screws as well as a widened linear rail now I'm not gonna talk anymore and let's get to the vlog part of the video so I've just come to upgrading the UI because obviously I have one of the first models that is out in the entire world So I need to do the update of the firmware and uh Where's the power button? Uh, it's only in the back it's a very nice green button, but it is the only power button is there in the back. At least this hasn't changed. It's still just a plug that plugs into your wall on which you can push the power on. And then you can switch, obviously, the switch at the back and it better light up uniformation. It does. And thus forth, this turns upon the power to the machine. Now, of course, I was told to upgrade uh, the, f the firmware now before doing anything. And uh, I'm gonna do this. Just first off, I really like how the screen looks. I don't know what's different about it or why it looks like this, but I really like, I just really like how the screen looks. Uh, it definitely looks very nice. <laughs> it looks much more tidier for some reason. I don't know why, even though it's probably exactly the same as the other one, uh, but it looks cool. So in order to update uh, the firmware, what I have to do is plug that there thing in and then go upon into the thing and then play this thing and hope to be Jesus that it doesn't explode. Once that first one is done, I have to turn off the machine. <laughs> Which is very annoying that it's at the back, I'm not gonna lie. However, I'm going to be totally honest. And the way in which I run the power to my machines is through the power supply on the side. It's all plugged in and I have them all how they are. And I also have each machine labeled. I honestly never really turn off the power button. However, it is nice that there is a power button in the front of the machine. Uh, I don't think this is going to affect anything, uh, but it's just an observation for now. Now for the second part of the upgrade. I feel like this time it does it all by itself. That's definitely a loading bar. So um, it's asking me if it's a 3D printer and I'm going to accept yes on account of it probably is a 3D printer. Now of course sometimes this may happen and uh, you may need to figure it out. Uh, usually it's not so great when this happens. Uh, but uh, I think we can probably figure it out somehow. Yes, uh, my uh, Mandarin or Chinese or whatever language this is, is not very good and this is the correct way to do it and thus put it into a language that I understand. Yes, please. Thank you. Acceptable. So let's have a look at some of the settings in this new machine. If there are any new settings, the heating can be turned on. Of course, it has heating in this machine. All uniformation machines have heating. This is a fantastic thing about them. And the temperature can be set, I think, according to however you want it to be set. Let's see, how do you set the temperature? Why can I not change my temperature? I can't, oh, I can change, no mind. Nobody panic. Of course, the temperature can be adjusted and uh, that is just over there on that area. There also is an LED light on the inside of this machine, which can be turned on from here. That's pretty cool and fantastic. I just may have noticed something in the far back corner. This is in fact a camera. Yes, you heard it right here first. There is a camera to watch the prints. I like this already so far. Now I'm unsure if this is going to cause a problem uh, and I think it's probably supposed to turn it on or off before you do, but I'm just going to do that. And no fire came out, so let's carry on. 
It's got a freaking camera in it. So I noticed that the temperature was going up, as you can clearly see over there. It is consistently going up. Stop moving and go up. Please, for the video, man. Do you see? The temperature going up and I couldn't understand why. And then I looked at the setting and it said, maintain 20 degrees, preheat, it will stop automatically. So now it's at 20 degrees, don't come with that. It's gonna just freaking stay at 20 degrees and wait. So I can put the resin in and it will heat up the resin all by itself. And I wouldn't have to do and wait uh, for the next print. It wouldn't be as long. Fantastic, I like this. This is a good thing. Now, of course, we have the usual uh, suspects of exposure testing and vac cleaning and Z-axis movements and all these things. I'm going to move uh, my thing to the top. And while that is moving, I'm going to go... Never mind, not while it's moving, but it's moved far enough. Don't worry about that. Shh. But I would like to look into this little one over here. This is... It's something to do with the auto feeding system and this is to calibrate it uh, I don't understand any of this so I need to look at it not through my camera so I can figure this out okay so I have read these things and uh, this is obviously to do with the automatic uh, resin calibration uh, you need to do something to calibrate it obviously and then this one is to drain the resin out of the vat if you need to uh, Not the vat, but actually the bottle that goes in the back and all of these things sound really fantastic and all but I actually don't have a clue uh, About what's going on. It doesn't really matter as long as good prints come out of this machine That's all I really care about But what I can definitely say for sure is that this machine looks and feels just like every other uniformation that I have personally had to my grubby little paws upon. Many of the usual things that we are used to, for example, uh, this amazing bull plate. This is one of the best bull plates I've ever used in my life. It captures all the resin around the edge. You can walk around like a freaking madman with this and not drip resin anywhere. It has the exact same mounting system as the originals had and this is literally able to be done with one hand and uh, that's fantastic. Not only that, but none of this ever gets full of resin. So this means that removing the plate and taking off stuff can all be done without any gloves because I don't have to touch any resin at all during this process. Now, one thing I've never had any use for is one of these dust cap things. So I think we should just take this out uh, right now and just get rid of that. There is usually gonna be some form of a cover or protection on the inside. This vat is not held down in the usual way. On the GK2, it was just kind of slid in and held in by some very small little clips. This time, they've taken a idea from the GK3 Ultra and they have these clamps which actually lock it into place and uh, this vat is not going anywhere at all. Now I know some of you are complete nerds about the film that goes between your screen and the prints that you make. I am not this kind of a nerd. I don't really care. As long as it works, it works. If it starts to get dirty and messed up, I change it. I just don't care about these things. So if you do care, then maybe this uh, preview and look at whatever this is, uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't even know. It is matte on one side and shiny on the other. And again, like I said, I don't care because a film is a film and that's in my own opinion and if you think any different uh once again don't care so there is a piece of plastic on the screen over here and uh, I'm pretty sure that what you are seeing is the screen protector. On Uniformation machines they have this little black thing which goes with the screen protector on their screen and I'm pretty certain about this because as I move it around I can see it's probably really hard to see this on camera. It's impossible for me to show you actually, but I can see that there is another layer over the screen. One of the really cool things about these particular screen protectors is that not only does it have a screen protector, but it also has a little bit of like tape around the edge. It's not tape, it's all built into one, but this is an incredible system. I like the way that this works because when you replace your screen or the screen protector or whatever it is, you are essentially blocking up every little hole with this thing. It's not gonna be a full block, but it will do a pretty darn good job of protecting your internals in the inevitable or uh, when you have the problem of this thing leaking, which doesn't happen often, but if it does, you would rather have that protection. Now once the vat is in place, it's as simple as clipping and clipping 
and she's not going any anywhere. This I like. This, this is much better than most of the systems that I've used so far. I really, really like this system. Well, now I guess the most important thing for me to do is to actually check that the screen is working. What the f***? Whilst I was pushing on the screen, I was like, the screen feels loose. Something is incorrect. However, if you don't want to bend down like I've been doing the whole time to work on the screen, you can just lift up the screen. Look at that. You can literally just lift up the screen and push the button, button, freaking... Wow, that's cool. I like that, definitely. But why? Tell me why, pray, could we not have had a power button inside here? That's all we needed. Put the power button there, close him up. You'd never know it's there. It looks nice and sleek. That would have been really cool. If we could have had a power button there, magic. And again, a power button is really not the be all and end all of things. I'm just saying this because I have to say it because I don't want to be the one that didn't say it. I guess the next best thing now would be to put some resin in this bad boy and uh, set up my first uh, print, which is going to be an exposure test so I can figure out what's going on. I still can't get over this. This is so crazy. I really like this. This is. I never have to bend down and look at a machine again. Excellent. Let's go and set it up on the computer and uh, do our first print. Oh, so this is the new uniformation thing. It is, bro. And let me just show you something. Do you remember how we always have to bend down like a bunch of weirdos? No more. No way, bro. Nah, that that is that's innovation. Nah. I agree with that you. That is innovation. Even Genuine. though this was definitely Who? not recreated. <laughs> I didn't just say this a minute ago. So Uniformation never said a thing about it being self-leveling or being leveled from factory at all. In fact, I've been uh, mentioned by one of my fellow creators that I should level it. And uh, that's not how I roll. I'm going to just try and print and if it prints out the box, then fantastic. If not, I'll deal with the leveling issue. Uh, let's see what harpoons. Apparently my cartridge is empty. I guess now would be a pretty good time for me to tell you that there are some differences between the GK3 and the GK3 Pro that you might have been noticing if you've seen any of the advertising for this stuff. And uh, it's very confusing, I'm not going to lie, but the main differences, uh, pretty much, is the fact that there is a different light source in the GK3. The GK3 has a 405 nanometer light source and this GK3 Pro has a 385 nanometer light source and this ultimately really means that it's, it's pretty much useful for transparent resins and some specialist resins but not really for much else that we do. Uh, to be frank, I don't know if it's going to make a difference to any of us but we probably would maybe notice a slightly longer layer cure time uh, but the reality is unless you're printing in clear all the time maybe i don't know i can't even tell you uh, the honest truth about that but what i can say is that the build plate's pretty much the same on both of them uh the i think there isn't a refill on the three i'll be totally honest i was only sent the pro so i actually don't know the complete differences this is just coming off the top of my head from what i've seen online and asked the people and stuff uh, to be completely even more honest i had an entire interview with them and i forgot every single thing uh, so there's that also uh, you don't come to me for the hard-hitting uh, evidence or the facts of things because that's not the kind of person i am i like to make videos uh, about just making things at the end of the day most stuff just works at least in my case and if it doesn't hopefully the companies make it work and if it doesn't work then well I guess you have to throw it in the bin. <laughs> I'm not really sure, actually. To be totally honest, though, this machine worked for me perfectly great out the box. As you saw, I didn't level anything. Um, I like to do that with machines when I get them. Uh, only recently, I never liked to do that in the past, but recently, I felt like most of these companies suggest that their machines come pre-leveled, so I'd like to test that statement of theirs. And to be fair, in most cases, it's been pretty good uh, for me anyway i guess we are at the part of the video where i can actually start showing you some of the prints that came out of this machine and what they kind of came out looking like
So I was sent this machine a couple days before I went to Germany for the Formnext convention or expo, whatever you want to call this thing. And I obviously didn't have much time. My time was very limited with this machine. And in the four days that I had with it, I printed every single minute that it was with me. And what I printed uh, was a couple of things. I would like to mention Tariq Saber, who has sculpted this amazing Amazonian lady. Uh, which is obviously Wonder Woman and you can find a link for this in the description as well So please check out the description for links for the models as well as if for the printer in case you wanted to buy it uh, I don't get a kickback from any other model stuff uh, But I do definitely get a small commission if you buy anything from Uniformation uh, through any of my links uh, So yes, next thing I would like to say is I printed all of this stuff at 0.05 millimeters uh, that's the only way I felt I could get stuff done in time uh, without having a problem and not getting stuff done. I used uh, no anti-aliasing. Also, this is printed in Sunlu 14K resin, which is not the greatest resin in the world. And uh, yes, I think the prints came out uh, pretty fantastic. So, if you want my opinion on whether to buy this printer or not, well, the truth is, we're at the point where almost every printer that comes out is going to be pretty good with a couple of little irritating things. That's how we, that's where we're at. That's pretty much it. I honestly can't tell you yes or no at this point anymore. Uh, but the reality is, it depends on how much money is in your bank and how much you like, perhaps, the features that this machine has. I would 100% suggest go and watch a couple of other creators' videos. I will mention a couple right now that will definitely help you out in perhaps making your decision. Number one, you can check out Greedy3D. He's going to have a video on this exact machine. So will uh, Fohammer, as well as Battle Brother Sam and Rising Ape Mini. So there's a bunch of videos from a bunch different people with a bunch of different opinions uh, for you to check out at the end of the day we get sent these machines they ask us to make videos and that's what we do we make a video that's what our friggin job is i hope that you enjoyed this video and if you didn't then i don't really care but before i tell you the thing that i need to tell you i just want to stop for one second and say thank you to the patrons because it's the patrons that uh, keep the lights blind in my eyeballs and you may have noticed that this picture looks a little bit different that's because of them too. So I want to say a massive thank you to the Patreons for that. They know exactly what I'm talking about. And I will now uh, call this video done. And the only way to call one of my videos done is to say if you didn't like anything you saw here, you're more than welcome to f*** off. <laughs>